team. So in today's lecture, we're going to talk about inheritance patterns or problems that don't explicitly follow Mendelian rules. Some of them actually are following um, logical inheritance patterns, and others are just, uh, they, they just are resulting in different phenotypic classes for whatever reason, and others actually are influencing the classes such that, influencing the DNA such that it becomes extremely messy. This is a cool lecture because it, it sheds light on how incredibly complicated discussions of genetics and heredity actually are. It's really easy when we sit down with our little Punnett squares and our little letters to be like, oh, man, we've got this. We can figure out anything that we want to in terms of what our babies are going to look like. But the fact is that genetics is extremely complicated. There are many, many factors, and this nine-part lecture today is going to talk about uh, just a handful of those factors that can complicate things. So we're going to start out by looking at, we're, we're going to basically move from um, easier to not as much easier, and we'll see how we feel at the end of this thing. So let's talk about incomplete dominance first. The first example we're going to talk about is incomplete dominance. In situations where there is incomplete dominance, it's pretty logical. And it's what you'd expect. A heterozygote shows a unique phenotype. And what that means, visualize this for a second. If, for example, we were going to look at a flower color and we had a red flower that was coded for by this <coughs> big R dominant allele, and we had a white flower that was coded for by little recessive alleles in this particular gene. The uh, heterozygote would, we, 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 this makes sense, would show a pink flower. Now, the key is that this really is its own phenotypic class. It really is that there is a, a, a new phenotype being expressed. And it's important to recognize that because incomplete dominance shows something totally different and independent than my next situation, which is codominance, where two things are kind of equally dominant. So it might be a little bit tricky to um, get it through your brain, the difference between these two. But my flower example, we have a true breeding white flower with a true breeding red flower, and the result is all these heterozygous pink flowers. Let's look at codominance and see if we can um, distinguish between these two. Today we are going to learn about incomplete dominance. Incomplete dominance is when the organism that has the heterozygote genotype takes on an intermediate phenotype. In other words, organisms with the heterozygote genotype will present physical appearances that are a mixture of the two traits that could be expressed. Let's look at an example using flowers to understand this concept a little bit better. Let's take a red flower. Its genotype will be big R, big R. And let's take a white flower. Its genotype will be big W, big W. These are both homozygotes. Now let's use a punnett square to cross a red flower and a white flower. This is a punnett square. We will put the red flower's alleles on top as big R, big R, and the white flower's alleles on the side as big W, big W. Now fill in the boxes like we have done in class. We have big R, big W in the first box, and continue to fill that in in each of the other boxes. As we can see from this cross, we get flowers that are all big R, big W. 
If we apply the principle of incomplete dominance, the flowers with the genotype big R, big W, will be pink flowers because pink is a mixture of red and white. Therefore, all of these flowers will be crossed will be pink because they are taking on the intermediate phenotype. Now, codominance is a situation where um, both alleles are expressed fully. So in the, in the heterozygote, again, you have a unique phenotype. So codominance, you have a unique phenotype, but both alleles are expressed. I have two examples of this. First of all, you have a, like blood type. You can have type A blood, you can have type B blood, or you can have type AB blood. This is an example of codominance because both A and B are dominant alleles. And if you have type AB blood, you've got both of those alleles present, you have a, to a different phenotype that is the full expression of both of those alleles. Another example of this is a uh, cow color. There's a cow, what, variety? Here's my pretty little white cow. Here's my pretty little red cow. You combine them together, you get a cow called a roan cow. And if you look closely, it's the expression of red cow bits and white cow bits. And that is, um, an example of codominance. Now, blood type, my blood type example, is also an example of the next one. So let's, let's stick with the blood type here example. It is codominant, but it also has multiple alleles. And let's look closer at the genetic situation with blood typing. We looked at monohybrid crosses and Punnett squares in this video. In this video, we are now going to look at codominance. I'm going to assume you understand the difference between genotype and phenotype. The genotype is a set of genes. The phenotype are the physical characteristics that are coded for the genotype. A monohybrid cross is the study of the inheritance of one characteristic such as the pea pod color. They will either be green or yellow, not a mixture of the two. Only one of the allele is expressed, and the yellow allele is dominant, so in the YY genotype, the yellow pod color wins. In codominance, the alleles are both expressed in the same phenotype, so you can end up with a mixture. Neither allele is dominant. This happens with chickens. Neither the black nor the white allele is dominant, so the BW genotype gives a speckled phenotype. Codominance is seen throughout the animal kingdom and in plants and also seen in our blood group. Okay, sometimes you have multiple alleles and this can complicate different heredity patterns. What this means is that you have one gene and we've been looking at two alleles, but you can have, oh, more than two alleles. I wanted to use the greater than, less than sign, but I, my brain can't do that on the fly. Which way does the little arrow go? I don't know. Blood type. Here we are. I'm going to draw you a blood cell. And my blood cell, your blood type exists because you have little protein substances called antigens embedded in the cell wall of your red blood cells. So this would be an example of an antigen. And look, the blood type gene, for whatever reason, why did they do it this way? I have no idea. It's the I gene codes for these little antigens. So if you have the I gene, you're going to have some kind of, well, never mind. Let's just say the I gene codes for these specific antigens in red blood cells. Now, I'm going to tell you all the multiple alleles. You would expect 
you have IA, which codes for A antigens. You can have IB, which codes for B antigens. That work for you? And you can have I, baby I, recessive I, which codes for no antigens. Now check it out. I'm going to draw you a blood cell. And you tell me right now what antigens, um, what is the genotype of this blood cell right here, the one I've drawn right now? Do you see any antigens on it? No. So the genotype has to be, do you agree, little i, little i. The reason why it was codominant is because we fully, we've got AB blood. This guy is AB blood. That guy is O, type O blood, because it doesn't have any antigens on it at all. Okay, does that work for you? The multiple alleles are significant because it just increases the number of different um, categories or situations that you can have. Tell me, if I have type B blood, what does my blood cell look like? Type B blood has B antigens on the blood cell. Do you agree with that? What is my genotype? Well, I've got to have IB to get those B antigens. What else? I could have two IBs or I could have IB, little i. Both of those result in the same B blood phenotype, right? Um, I think that's it. What? That's crazy talk. We can actually talk about um, doing things like determining whether or not your mother is your mother based on blood type. Oh, mixed up babies in hospitals. Yeah. Then you can figure out which baby goes with which mama based on blood types. <laughs> yeah, start thinking about that fun stuff. Not mixing up your baby at the blood, whatever. Figuring it out. Being a sleuth. Being a whatever that's called person who puts babies back with their mamas. There's another one polygenic traits. Try and guess what it is before we get there, and then I will tell you all about it. There are four groups, A, B, A, B, and O. There are three possible alleles for blood group, but we each only have two of them, one from our mother and one from our father. IA and IB are codominant. IO is recessive to both IA and IB. These genotypes give these phenotypes. So if you inherit IA from your mother and IB from your father, you will be AB blood group. To be blood group O, both your parents must have at least one IO allele. Your parents could be either of these three genotypes. If we look at this in a Punnett square, so let's say the father has IA, IO, and the mother has IB, IO genotypes, then the offspring could be any of these genotypes. Blood group AB, blood group B, blood group A, or blood group O. The offspring has inherited the O allele from each parent. So there we have codominance. Sometimes neither allele takes dominance, and so both are expressed in the phenotype as seen with speckled hens, roan horses, and even in our blood group.